Hi, crafters, Amy here with Amy Swears, and today I'm going to show you some easy watercolor backgrounds using ink pads. Now, I recently acquired this Lux collection from Catherine Pooler of the mini ink pads. I have some watercolor paper and some watercolor brushes. Now, here are a couple photos of the finished panels. Now, do watch for part two of this where I'm hoping to turn this into finished cards, but this is more about just creating the backgrounds with this really simple, easy watercolor technique that I promise anyone can do. <laughs> so to start, I'm just going to pick a few colors from this set. I essentially have a red, yellow, and blue that I'm going for. So I'm just going for basic primary colors, and I'm kind of intending on kind of creating rainbows with these three colors. Now, if you aren't familiar, Catherine Pooler ink pads are actually on a foam base, and they're extremely pigmented and juicy. So they're great for watercoloring because they are, are water-based. So you can see here, I'm just spritzing them with my my little water bottle and I have this one inch um, I think it's silver brand I'm not sure what I'll, I'll link the details in the video description box below but as you can see here <laughs> my brush is quite dry um, you're about to witness the depths of my laziness here um, I was like yeah I'm gonna watercolor with my little ink pads and didn't even think at all about you know how to wet the brush or clean the brush. So approximately four feet in front of me um, across the room is a empty mason jar, which I was too lazy at this point to go fill and use um, as my water jar for water coloring. So at this point, it's not going great. I've effectively made an orange when I intended to make a yellow and I'm getting all sorts of streaks, but you know, I'm committed. So you're going to see my laziness in full form here. So um, I'm still struggling to kind of get the, the brush wet. You can see I'm just spraying the little area with the ink and spraying the brush because I'm committed and I'm going to make this work. So I'm kind of overlapping this yellowy orange with the blue, still wetting my brush, trying to get it to cooperate. Still quite streaky, but whatever. I'm just going with it. So now I'm effectively trying to clean the brush on my stamp chamois because again, I'm too lazy to get up and go grab the water jar. But here you can see, didn't intend to do that. Put those nice little kind of greenish streaks all over. But then I thought, hey, Bob Ross, happy little accident. I kind of like how this looks. So I went with it and I decided to make this kind of almost like a abstract plaid. And I used the dry brush to my advantage and kind of gave it some really cool texture. So definite happy accident that uh, was born from my laziness in this case. But um, I did get up right after this panel and um, wipe off my glass mat and fill my mason jar so that I could, you know, accurately wet my brush and clean it off when I needed to. So now we're getting back to more what I intended to do in the first place, and I decided to grab some different colors. I have this gorgeous, I think it's called Glam. It's like a really, really deep, um, I don't know, almost like a muted dark fuchsia. Um, and I'm going for that teal again, and then the red and then the yellow. So um, they end up kind of similar when all is said and done in terms of the color palette, but I did end up grabbing four different um, ink pads from this. And this is all in real time. I don't have this sped up. So you're kind of watching this, um, you know, in the real amount of time that it actually took me. So I'm doing everything essentially the same. I'm just swatching these inks down onto my glass mat. Um, this glass mat is a recent purchase. I got it from a small business called Glassboard Studios. It's actually magnetic underneath and it's amazing for stenciling. You may have seen me um, post a video about it or talk about it, but it's a game changer and I absolutely love it. And I love the pretty aqua color. But here you can see the effect that I was kind of originally going for. You have some nice um, blending and mixing of the colors. The paint is really kind of, not paint rather, the ink is, is really blooming um, as I work down the panel. And I'm just kind of letting the colors mix together organically and picking up some, you know, water spots where they kind of pool on the edge of the paper. But I'm basically just kind of working from, you know, the yellow upward into the purples and the red. So I am cleaning my brush off as I go um, and then dabbing it off on that pat <laughs> pattern paper, 
yes, pattern paper, no, paper towel, <laughs> and working up into these warmer colors, just spritzing them um, with the water bottle as I go. So I'm working into the red, the kind of purplish color is playing pretty nice with the red. Um, it's not a proper rainbow, but you get the idea. Um, and then I'm just kind of wiping up the parts on my glass mat that are getting a little bit muddied so I can come back in and kind of, you know, amp up that color a little bit. So this is a fun way to use your dye ink pads, um, especially really juicy ones like this, um, maybe in a, in a different way. It's a great way to stretch your supplies. Um, like I said, I only recently got these and I wanted to have a go with them, but I didn't really feel like ink blending. So I thought, you know, I'll get them out and just play and have fun. Now, I didn't want to waste all this ink on my glass mat so I decided to grab another piece of watercolor paper and create another panel. Now you can just spritz it with water and kind of smoosh your um, piece of paper right down into it but I like a little bit more control than that. So if you grab a little piece of acetate or this was actually packaging um, that I had off to my left you can use that and kind of see what you're doing when you're laying down the colors and you have a little bit more control. So if you're a bit of a control freak with your splatter or with your splotching or whatever you want to call this um, this is a nice way to kind of control where you put the ink so that you don't kind of muddy up the colors in a way that you don't intend. And it's also a nice way to kind of get the really dark spots that you can kind of layer up on top. I just find this a really fun way to do the ink smooshing technique. So I'm just kind of wiping this off with my stamp chamois, kind of cleaning off the areas on my glass mat um, that I don't want to use. And then now I'm just kind of pouncing this watercolor paper directly into um, this yellow just to kind of add that and then into the blue to kind of create a little bit more green. But it just creates a really fun whimsical kind of splotchy background. So um, all of these would be great for um, either die cutting or silhouette flower stamping or flower outline stamping or even just with like a die cut. So like I said, I am going to try and make a separate video. I just didn't want it to be too long um, where I turned these into cards. But I'm so pleased with how that first one turned out. Um, my little lazy oopsie and I like how it turned out. And then this is kind of more what I had in mind when I started playing. And then this is obviously just a fun ink smooshing technique as to not waste my ink on my glass mat. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. And like I said, do watch for a follow-up video. Um, if you want to be notified when I place new videos or um, post new videos, hit the bell and then you'll be notified. Um, so thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.